Patrick Lemon and I first met in 1992 as members of DC Men Against Rape. In 1997, we transformed DC Mar into the Men's Rape Prevention Project, which was the previous name of Men Can Stop Rape. What I'm proudest of about Men Can Stop Rape is the way that we have taken a very small endeavor that really started in Patrick's house um, and turned it into a local, national, and international initiative. Men Can Stop Rape. I've been active in the pro-feminist men's movement for long enough to have seen lots of groups, unfortunately, fail and fade away. And I've watched Men Can Stop Rape, and it's just been so different. Um, it has survived, it has thrived, it is growing. Its impact on the nation and on other countries is just beyond what anyone could have imagined. And I'm so proud to have been a part of its first 10 years of success. I actually like the way the most clubs are being taught, how they teach kids about such an alternative view on the perspective of how men are within society. After high school, I decided to continue volunteering my time and my spare time to the club, not to mention to the actual organization. And once I started college, Neil basically bestowed upon me the advisory board presidency for the most clubs. I just help out because I'm actually a friend to everybody at the organization. I know the organization helped me back, and I just want to return the favor. For me, it was a privilege to be a recipient of the uh, 2002 Men of Strength Award uh, presented by Men Can Stop Rape. It meant a lot because whenever you are awarded something, it's important in terms of who is presenting the award. And to receive it from your organization was truly an honor, and I really appreciate it. The list of award recipients is quite impressive. Thank you so much. One of the most valuable aspects of the training for me was the chance to work with like-minded educators and activists from around the world that do the same kind of anti-sexist work. The strength training gave me the chance to go from someone that was peripherally involved in the movement to someone that was integrally, deeply involved. It helped me build a lot of confidence in my ability in working with young men. The first time I saw the posters was I was attending a meeting at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And it was something that I thought that, okay, this organization is located in the district. And we were just beginning to get our rape prevention education program off the ground and what a better way to do this. And that's how I looked at that, that, oh, this is a really good message that needs to be given to the community. The Fannie Mae Foundation's mission statement expresses its commitment to its hometown, Washington, D.C. The Foundation shares Men Can Stop Rape's conviction that a healthier, nonviolent model is a critical skill for the district's male high school students. That critical skill contributes hugely to our goal of improving the quality of life in our hometown. I think the spark that draws board members to Men Can Stop Rape is the enormous potential that the organization has to mobilize young men in ending violence against women. For me, the work of the organization is really unique in terms of focusing on prevention, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to become more involved. And to serve in a leadership role as president of the board is really quite an honor. It gives me an opportunity to work with all the board members, but also to work closely with Patrick and the rest of the staff to help take the organization to where it wants to go. I see Men Can Stop Rape and the Men of Strength Clubs as having such a very bright and effective future in the prevention of men violence against women. We believe in peer education in a way in which older, older peers support and educate uh, younger peers. And so what we're gonna be doing in the future, just as a philosophy of working, is really allowing middle school students to start to get a taste of the opportunities to be strong without being violent. And the way we're gonna do that is to have our high school members work with them throughout the year. 
We're gonna be calling that between the notes, following on Duke Ellington's wonderful quote that the music is between the notes. In many ways, because of the success of our trainings here in DC and nationally, we're faced with a demand that we simply can't meet as an organization right now. So over the next 10 years, we're going to develop a training bureau um, where trained um, speakers from around the country are able to train other youth serving professionals. In addition, we're developing the Organizing Strength Toolkit, which is going to be a guide for student activists that want to mobilize men on their campuses. I see a spotlight sweeping across the stage, illuminating a line of young men who are waiting to receive their awards. As our Men of Strength clubs grow across the country and expand into new cities, we may have a line of young men from anywhere that a most club exists. I see the Men of Strength Awards evolution really serving the corporate sponsors who lend their name to underwrite the activities that we support. It's getting their name out there and connecting them to an issue in a really public way and letting people know that it's not just about the corporate bottom line, that these companies care about the people of their communities and about the young people. With respect and how to build a community based on caring and love. As someone with a limited amount of money who needs to choose carefully where I give my money, one of the things that impresses me about Mixer is its attention to evaluation. Both Patrick and the rest of the staff don't simply create programs and then launch them. I have watched them think hard about whether their programs are actually making change, and they have one of the more rigorous models of evaluation that I've ever seen in a small nonprofit. And the attention to that, as well as the constant adjusting of their program to the needs of the community around them are what's going to keep me giving. Imagine you're in Times Square in New York City and you look up and you see there a huge billboard that says, our strength is not for hurting, lighting up the square. In a popular culture overcrowded with images of men's violence, Strength Media Works will continue to provide compelling messages and dazzling images for a new and safer world. What we're trying to accomplish now, what we're focusing on, is to really find as many ways as possible to bring more allies to the table, more voices to the table, to recognize and to speak out for the absolute necessity of finding comprehensive, positive, and evaluated methods uh, for bringing forward men's voices into this movement. We're working on that on a local level, continuing to have our commitment and our strong focus on the District of Columbia, on the national level, uh, throughout the country, and even on an international level. And we see our strength campaign, which is the combination of all of our different programs, as a kind of beacon that's going to help to guide all of these movements around the world into this comprehensive, positive, and effective approach. Thank you.